What's up guys, I'm DJ Swivel and on this week's episode of In The Mix, I'm gonna be breaking down my production and mix of the Euphoria remix by Jungkook of BTS. That is a mouthful. But before we get started, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell, do what you gotta do, run the intro. DJ Swivel in the mix. What's up guys, I'm DJ Swivel and we're back for another week of In The Mix. And uh, this week's episode, I'm gonna be breaking down the Euphoria Forever Mix, the DJ Swivel Forever Mix. Uh, I've already broken down uh, Euphoria a few different times on on uh, the internet, on YouTube. Uh, the original version, this time we're going to break down the ballad version, which, um, you know, there was an interesting story of how this song came to be. It actually came to be because of you guys, because of the, the army, BTS's like amazing fans. Uh, somebody had sent me a video of uh, a, a husband and wife for their first dance, dancing to Euphoria. And I thought, wow, that's really beautiful, but I it's a, a husband and wife's first dance. I wish there was a slower, more intimate, more uh, sort of more romantic, if you will, version of the song. And so I kind of put that out there as a joke. And then you guys asked me to make it. And so uh, there was enough pressure to do it uh, that I said, you know, that'll be a fun little thing to do. So I did... Uh, and then I sent it, uh, to big hit to see if they liked it. And then, uh, they did. And so here we are. Uh, anyways, uh, I'm going to be breaking it down as always. Let's go through, um, the system usage stuff. Uh, we're using 169 voices, uh, and there is no drums on this song at all. Really? I think there might be, uh, is there a timpani? There might be like one timpani track at the end, but to be honest, uh, no, I, uh, oh yeah, I, uh, no, there isn't. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm forgetting all the things in it. Actually, matter of fact, there, there might be, uh, something down here. I think there might be like, uh, some symbol transitions or something like that. We'll go through it all. But the majority of the sounds on this are all like strings. This was an, like, this was meant to be an orchestral arrangement of Euphoria. And I wanted to really make it more musical and have more, um, uh, depth to the chord progressions and, and, uh, and just how the song, uh, sort of evolves and grows throughout the, the, the length of the song. So, uh, we've got 169 voices. Most of them are stereo tracks. So there's probably about like 80 something tracks here. I'll just kind of quickly go through. We got two piano tracks. Um, and then this is live, uh, bass. Uh, the, uh, when I say live bass, not like an electric bass, a, an acoustic, like a, a contrabass. Uh, then we have, these are programmed strings. So using, uh, like a soft synth, which I had, uh, an amazing, uh, incredible friend of mine, John Perkins. He's an incredible string arranger. So, so he and I went back and forth on this and, and he really helped pull this all together. Uh, and then we have, uh, so these are all the program strings. There's about what, mm, four, eight, there's about 12 tracks of that. And that's everything from, you know, string basses to cellos, cello leads, cello, just more, uh, legato sections. There's a cello intro here, uh, some violins, violas, uh, staccato elements. It's all there. And then we get into the, uh, live strings which is, I believe these are also programmed, these violin staccato. I have to listen. I'll tell you once I hear them. Uh, and these are definitely all live. So live violin staccato, live uh, cello stuff. There's a lot of cellos in it. Then we get down to the violas and violins uh, all the way down here. That's all violas and violins. Uh, then we have this, like like I said, cymbal swell, uh, and there's a few other, I think these are the, yeah, there is some timpani rolls here and some like reverse percussion sounds. And then the rest is vocals. Then we've got, these are all uh, Jungkook's vocals. And uh, there is some new vocals that he did just for this, some ad libs, which we can go over. Uh, and then of course my master fader and all of my sort of reverbs and, and things like that. So uh, this is my typical setup. If you guys have watched any of the other in the mixes, you'll know uh, this is what it's all about. And 
And yeah, without further ado, let's dig into it. Okay, so the first thing, it was built around the piano. So let's just quickly listen to the piano. Obviously the whole thing grows and I'm not gonna make you guys listen through the whole thing, but I will sort of break down the various, uh, the various sections. So we start with, with the simple intro, let's just hear it. All right, so that's enough. That gives you a general idea. So you can hear the articulation in it. You know, it's not all quantized to the beat. This was naturally played. Uh, you know, when I when I put this together, you know, I'm actually quite good at putting piano arrangements together, but I do it, I draw them in. I don't have the uh, finger dexterity that true, uh, you know, a true uh, pianist or, or musician would have. And so this is where I rely on, uh, you know, my friend John is, he is a classically trained musician and he has all that articulation stuff. And, and it, I just wanted it to have a, a human feel. Uh, so I didn't want to program anything. I wanted it to be as live as it could possibly feel. So, uh, what are we doing on it? Well, uh, actually I'm, because there's so many strings and so many bass elements of this song, I'm actually taking out a lot of the bass from it. So let me just take out, uh, I'm, I've bypassed all the plugins and let's just hear, we'll listen to another section. Let's listen up here and see what this sounds like. So you guys get it. Now let's start adding, uh, I'll add each plugin one at a time so you can hear what they're doing. Um, let me find a section that doesn't move quite as much. Let's try this here. So that adds like a tiny bit of brightness um, and there is this delay on it. There's a very subtle delay there just to help with the movement a bit, uh, but nothing too dramatic. And then we add, uh, like I said, we're sucking some of the low end out. And it's not that it didn't sound good. If this song was mostly just all piano and there was less of the string and bass and all these other sections, I probably would not have taken the low end out. I'd want the piano to be as full as possible. But in this case, you know, when you have this many sounds that we've sort we're sort of exploring here, um, you really have to do a lot of picking and choosing of what gets priority. And so in this case, I needed to suck some of the bass out of the piano so that it would make room for the cellos and, and the live uh, uh, bass uh, strings. So anyways, we're just taking out just everything below like about 70 hertz here. So this will be a subtle change. And here we go. Okay, so it takes a little bit of the bass out. Then, doing a little something else that's interesting. Because this is a pop song, uh, I want the vocals to be the most important part of the song, always. On a song like this, it's all about the vocals. The, the piano is beautiful, the strings are beautiful, but the vocal is what sells it. And so, what I've actually done is, this is a plugin from Waves called Center, and what I've done is I've pulled out like 11 dB from the center channel. So now we're gonna get this nice wide piano. So let's see if you guys can hear it. I will uh, play a few bars. I'll play a bar and then I will uh, hit bypass and you'll hear what it's doing. See, now it's a little quieter and that's because we're just taking level out and I didn't compensate for it here. Um, but because we're taking just the center stuff information out, the stereo stuff, the left and right, the, the wideness of the piano is staying. And so now by doing that, it makes the piano feel wider. And the reason I did that is set so that the lead vocal that's in the center, uh, would have more room to breathe. There would be more space for the lead vocal. So that was, this is all about, not about making the piano sound as good as it can. Of course we do that, but this was more about 
leaving room for the vocal to breathe. So that's what that's all about. And then finally, uh, we, we do have some, uh, a multiband, um, uh, compressor on here and that's just taking out around 3600 sometimes pianos around that that upper mid 3600 4000 there can be some weird frequencies in pianos that um that just fight with a vocal and so we're just taking some of that out and it might only be in the loudest portions of the song but let's uh let's see how much is coming out So to be honest, it's not even hitting anything there. I think this might have been something. There might be one one like little line at the end of the song where it does uh, uh, pull it out. But either way, for the most part, that multiband compressor is not doing much. It might only be hitting once or twice through the entire song. Okay, so uh, moving on. That's the main piano. Uh, and then we have this additional piano, which is a piano layer. And I'll just play that at the end and I'll play it against the other piano so you can hear what it's doing. And generally speaking, uh, it's similar. We actually went a little darker on this one because it's already bright. Uh, and a little bit of EQ and uh, a little bit of compression. So let's hear this additional piano. And now I'll add the other, the first piano. So this is just adding some sort of call and response melodic uh, sort of lead elements uh, to this is like sort of the right hand of your piano, if you will. Uh, okay, cool. So that's the two pianos. Now let's move on to the strings. So I'm not going to go in order of the song. I'm just going to go in order of uh, how I have it in here just to keep it organized because there is a lot. Um, but these are all live instruments. So we're stacking them because sometimes when you record a live instrument by itself, like, sure, it can, if you mix it and make it loud and, and get it sounding the way that you want, I'm sure it's great. But in this case, I wanted a really wide um, stereo image on the song so that the vocal that's living primarily in the center would have plenty of room to breathe. Uh, and so I didn't want to have too many, like, mono sounds that are going to sort of overlap on the vocal. So anyways, here's the bass stack. Let's hear what it's doing, and I'll add one at a time. And you'll notice this one is just panned to the left. That's just to give it a subtle, you know, this one is only panned to the left. As you can see, uh, these all have audio on both sides, but this one does not have audio on that right side. Uh, in context, that's not actually going to matter. It just subtly leans the bass to the left once you add all four, and you'll hear it. Here we go. Oh. So that's the basses, and then that is layered. Remember I said we have uh, live strings, and then we also have program strings. So this is layered with the existing uh, program uh, base, which is this. And that's meant to, again, the program bases are like, you know, most of those soft synths, whether you use a uh, you know, East West strings or Hollywood strings or any of those sort of string programming applications. Um, they sound really, really good and really full. And it's like the perfect, uh, recording, but there's something 
it lacks a human feel. And so that's why we made sure we got live instrumentation on this so that we had more of that human feel. So the layer of the two, the combination of both, um, makes it feel full and like very intentional and programmed, but also because of the live layer, it there is some humanity to it. There is some imperfection, which we like. Um, okay, so moving on, uh, I'll go through, the reason that these live basses are here, by the way, is because when I mix, I like to start with the main instrument and then the basses and then everything else. Uh, and so uh, bass needs to glue to the piano and then I can, I can build everything else on top of that. So now we're gonna hear all of the programmed layers. And again, if you look at this, there's so much complexity. Unfortunately, I can't play every line of everything. I wish I could because there's such beautiful, beautiful moments. But what I will try to do is um, just play, I'll solo kind of all of them and you'll kind of, you'll see which, which things are kind of popping up. So let's start with these two cellos or the cello, the bass, and then this other cello. Now, one other thing that we missed there is this uh, tremolo, tremolo string. Listen to this one. And that's adding that like that tension, right? I'll play it one more time. Oh. And that's all that's there for is those transition sounds. All right. Um, so there's a few of the sounds. Let's just quickly show, you know, what's happening. First of all, they're all running through the same reverb, this B reverb. Um, all in equal amounts, I believe. And that's because we're mimicking, if there was an orchestra in a room and there was natural reverb in that room, it, they would, all elements would share the same reverb and share roughly the same volume uh, or certainly the relative volume of the sound. And so we're just trying to mimic how uh, reverb would react. There's no sense in trying to do a bunch of different reverbs on different sounds. Anyways, that reverb, let's scroll down. This is B reverb. And it's a Valhalla vintage verb. Love this one. Uh, we're cutting out some of the lows, like so everything under 160 is cut. Uh, we've shortened the decay time a little bit. But for the most part, it's just a nice, big, rich kind of hall sounding reverb. Okay. So uh, what other sounds do we have in this first phrase here? We have these violas. I mean, that's just beautiful to me. Um, so we got, you know, a bass, we have a cello line, we have a viola line and a violin line. And these are stacked. They don't sound like singular instruments. So it feels like you have a full orchestra there. Um, okay, what else can we do? Well, let me just quickly go through what I'm, how I'm processing these. Uh, I have a uh, virtual mix rack on here. This is just adding a little bit of brightness on the EQ, a little bit of compression and a little bit of... Uh, high-end sort of saturation and brightness there as well. Um, we are not doing a ton. Yeah, we're just sort of filtering out around everything below 50 hertz. Uh, we are cutting a little bit of, what's this, about 80 hertz. And that's about it. There's a little bit of brightness boost here, 2 dB, and a little bit around, you know, 3.5, 3.2 uh, kilohertz. There's uh, about a dB and a half of boost. Okay, and then what else do we have on the bases? We have this uh, vitalizer, which is doing some subtle like compression uh, on the bass frequencies, and there's also some subtle brightness stuff happening to it. And then uh, again, uh, this uh, this vitalizer can introduce some low end stuff. Uh, we have it sort of like in between the soft and, and the tight setting here, uh, and so we just add this to just everything below 62 hertz or whatever, we're just gonna get rid of. That's all that's happening there. Um, now, I'm not gonna go through every single one, but for the most part, these uh, uh, virtual mix racks should be largely the same. This one has the the pre on the cello. I think uh, I may have tried that on the bass and it was maybe breaking up the signal too much. Uh, but for the most part, I'm guessing these are, yeah, they're mostly the same-ish. There might be different settings, 
So for example, the cello intro, we have more of the thickness setting, uh, whereas this one we have none. Uh, and so, yeah, everything has its own unique uh, characteristics of the processing, but that, that's just too much to go into everything. I mean, everything's a little bit different here. Uh, let's just continue on and hear what some of the other elements in the song are. So in this section here, this is about, you know, a minute and a half into the song, we have this staccato section. I believe this is where the second verse starts. So let's hear what happens there. And we've got some uh, live strings as well. So here we go. And in that section, we also have this viola, so it's a, sort of a counter melody. So all pretty straightforward, just a nice counter melody there. But one thing to note, on this staccato, I do have a delay on it, if you guys could hear. And that delay is just adding another... Uh, sort of uh, stab or staccato, um, you know, motion sort of in between. So you're getting, a, I think it's a quarter or eighth note delay. What are we on? Medium delay here. And it's panned a little bit to the right. Uh, and we have, yeah, an eighth note delay. So you can kind of hear what that does. Let's hear it one more time. I'll take the delay off. And now we add. And you kind of hear it's the main instrument is panned a little to the left. The delay is panned a little to the right. And so you get this nice stereo uh, back and forth thing going on. So that's uh, that's something interesting there. Uh, you know, I mean, oh, there's so many great sections in this song. Uh, let's let's just keep moving down. So then we have these live uh, cellos. And I will get to the vocals, I promise. Uh, we have these live cellos. Let's hear what they're doing. Let's actually work our way uh, back a little bit. Here we go. That's, that's great. That's just, I love, I loved how this one came together. Um, okay. So the cellos, as you can tell, I mean, each section is doing a different thing, but we've basically stacked it. There's like ones in the center. And then these are all just panned hard left and hard right all the way down. So you're getting a really nice wide image and, um, all of them are running through this singular bus and we have a CLA vocals on it, which is adding a little bit of reverb, a little bit of uh, sort of slap delay, some brightness. We're sucking out some of the low end, not too much. Uh, and there's a little bit of compression on it. So um, I, can, I can sort of play another section here and I'll bypass it and you can hear what it's doing. Let's just take that whole section. Here we go. So it's adding some brightness, it's filling it out, adding a little fullness, uh, but not too, it's not like going too crazy. Uh, and yeah, so all those cellos run through that singular bus. Uh, what else can we go over here? Violins and violas, uh, similar. I'll, I'll just play you, why don't I play you the end layers here so you can kind of, I mean, here we have like a stack of almost 20 violins and violas. So it's definitely doing something interesting. And, uh, and then I'll sort of bypass all the plugins so you can hear kind of just what's going on. All right, here we go.
So primarily, we are definitely brightening it up. Again, with the, the CLA vocals, uh, there's a bit of reverb on it. Sorry, here, re a little reverb. There's some stereo imaging happening, so we're pushing those out to the side. Uh, we do have an interesting curve on the uh, Pro MB. I can't think of exactly why it looks this way. Uh, you know, I this song, is, I probably worked on this, I guess, two years ago, so I don't remember every reason I did everything, but... That's what we did, and uh, and a little bit of compression just to sort of tame everything and, and get it really controlled. There there is a lot going on, so you got to really use compression carefully and make sure that you're controlling certain things and also giving room for other things like, for example, these tremolos to really poke out uh, when they need to. Okay, so that's what we're doing on the strings, and let's go a little further down, and I will just quickly touch base with you guys on some of these uh, uh, percussive sounds. So I did add some cymbal swells and I'll just play everything. So we have this cymbal swell. Uh, I'm guessing, what is this? This is a timpani roll and then, we, so we have two different timpani rolls. So let's hear those. Now, th these timpani rolls, they happen throughout the whole ending. And I'll play you the whole ending now, and let's see if you can pick them out and see why. They're meant to accent certain chord changes. So, uh, yeah, they're subtle, they're not too loud, but you do feel them, and again, they're there to accent those chord changes so that there's a little more impact uh, behind them. Okay, uh, and of course we have some violin uh, tremolo sounds here. I'll play those again. Uh, we, you typically, in a, in a orchestral arrangement like this, you're gonna use that in areas where you wanna build up tension. So that's usually transitions. We're building up tension going into this final big like climactic chorus and so that uh those tremolos just allow they just build tension in in uh, the arrangement so that's what that is doing uh why don't i play just sort of coming out of the bridge before we get to the vocals let me just sort of play every all the string layers without the pianos and then i'll add the pianos just so you can kind of hear how they're interacting with one another okay so i'll i'll play about 30 seconds of the song here Okay, so that was good. That just shows kind of how how the piano and the strings are interacting. Uh, and then we have this final additional layer of, of staccato strings. Let me just play this transition here because, you know, the whole song, I'm trying to add different elements and pull them away. Every section I want to have its own kind of identity. And so the we have this like climactic chorus here, but then it go it steps up even one notch higher at the end. And uh, I thought that was a really cool thing. So let's just play that and hear what that sounds like. And then we end on this nice twinkly piano, which like just is the perfect ending in my opinion. So, so that's, that's for the most part, that's all of the string instrumentation. Uh, I'll just quickly play you like, for example, here's the live strings, the staccato layer, one of the staccato layers at the end. Uh, this is the violins and there's two basses in there as well. The reason they're grouped is because they're all doing the same thing. So I want to process them together.
So those are all live and then they marry to this one, which is the programmed one. So now let me add that. So adding that program layer definitely helps beef them up a bit. And then let's hear what this final staccato section is doing. And then that is sort of a counter to the other staccato layer. So let's hear what all of them are doing. So counter, they're both counter melodies, both pushing the energy forward, very aggressive in their play style. Um, and that just all helps build up uh, that final, final chorus, that major climax of the song. So that when we get to that end, that twinkly piano, it's just like, like a, a sigh of relief, kind of like you can breathe out. And now, now the song just kind of floats away. Um, I, I mean, I could not have done this without, uh, the help of, of, uh, John Perkins. You know, he really is a genius when it comes to this stuff. Um, but the way that we sort of interacted on it was, I would sort of present an idea and then he would take it and do his thing to it. And then I'd say, no, do it that way. And then a lot of back and forth, but ultimately that's what music is. It's, it's sort of a team effort. And, um, you know, I, I especially have a great team. So, uh, okay. What else do we have? Well, I guess we got to get to the vocals then. Uh, okay. Well, the vocals are actually mostly pulled from the original version of Euphoria. So, which I've broken down. I can play sections of it. I have done some editing to them, um, primarily for timing and also um, uh, just volume. Because the, the track of this is totally different than the track from the original Euphoria, uh, it's not like you just take the vocal and slap it on and you're done. Now I have to modify that vocal, EQ it a little bit differently, put it in a different space, put a different reverb on it or delays uh, because the arrangement's different. So you gotta, you gotta adapt. So it is the same vocal performance, but it is mixed differently. So I think what I did is I just pulled the original stem, the, the dry lead vocal from Euphoria, which by the way is at 105 BPM and this is at 102 BPM. So we also slowed the song down just by three beats per minute. Uh, but let's hear what the lead vocal is doing and what I am doing to it. So we're boosting some of that, those mid-range frequencies. Uh, we're getting rid of some low stuff that we don't need that's just taking up more information. Uh, and we're just cutting some of the highs a little bit. And the reason I did that is because you have all these strings, which are occupying those really high frequencies. So we want, uh, you know, to balance those out. They're occupying that. So we give a little more of the upper mid range room, uh, to the vocal. Uh, and of course the vocal is center and the strings and everything are, are panned off to the side. Uh, okay, as far as the reverb, we have the same reverb that the strings are going through, so it all feels like it's gluing uh, together, like it's one uh, performance. Although, uh, I do change the reverb on the lead vocal uh, towards, you know, the second half of the song, if you will. And that is, the second half is going through, it's actually the same reverb, just a longer decay time. Uh, and I think I'm adding a little more of the low end. I think the other one was at 160 Hertz that we cut up to, uh, in this case, I'm adding, uh, you know, I'm adding back some of that. So everything below 120 is cut. Now, uh, the decay time is four seconds, which is longer. And we have a longer pre delay. I think the other pre delay was 20 milliseconds and this one's about 75, 73, whatever. Uh, okay. So let's, uh, if you want, we can just hear what that vocal sounds like this section and I'll get rid of the reverb and delay so you can hear what it's doing. Close the door now When I'm with you, I'm in utopia Close the door now When I'm with you, I'm in utopia 
And of course, this lead two goes with it. That's why you missed the line there. So obviously, beautiful vocal, but you guys have really seen most of this vocal. So all of this here is the original vocals from Euphoria. I think actually, I want to say down to, no, these ad libs, I believe, are all new. So I think all of this stuff was newly recorded files. Uh, I mean, certainly this, but let's, uh, let's hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I believe that was actually from the original. Oh yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, this was definitely new. This was definitely new. Just adding some some subtle little adjustments there, uh, but where most of the new vocals come in is is at the end. So let's go through all that because uh, that doesn't that hasn't been shown before. Uh, so let's just hear what some of these are doing. Take my hands now. So that's just a low harmony. I'll play it with the lead. Uh, Take my hands now. You are the cause of my euphoria. Oh, I love that. That was such a great ad lib. Um, Candace cut that ad lib in, in the studio and, and uh, I was like, that, whatever that, like, that is it. I wanted this, I told her, I was like, I want this big soaring ad lib. I want you to go up there. Uh, I wanted it to feel like you were flying uh, at that moment. And that's what, what uh, she did. And then, and then like Jungkook just absolutely killed it. Um, just um, sounds so good. Uh, so anyways, we'll play that one more time. Okay. And what are we doing to his vocal? Well, there's a little bit of tuning on it. Nothing too much. This is like sort of normal average tuning speed. Nothing too crazy. Uh, we're in D major. Uh, what else do we have? We have some DSing going on. Uh, we have some uh, vocal compression uh, EQ, some stuff like that. So a little bit of boosting around 10K, a little bit of boosting around, what's this, around 5K or something, 4.5K. Uh, we're cutting around 2.5K, and, and we're cutting a fair bit, about 5.5 dB. And the reason for that is sometimes, especially, you know, artists with, in it, with a soprano register, uh, which Jungkook has, right around that 2,500 Hertz, 3,000, sometimes it's lower, sometimes it's 2,000. There's always usually a, f a, a weird frequency in that upper mid range of the human voice that can often feel um, piercing. Some vocalists don't have it and their, their vocals are just smooth like butter. But the majority of vocalists I, I work with, uh, the majority of them have like a, a just some interesting you know, piercing frequencies around two and a half K. And so we're just taming some of those normal stuff. Uh, and then we're adding a little bit of brightness and a little bit of like body to the voice here. And of course there's uh, two compressors on it. So, uh, we can, I can sort of bypass that and, and you can hear what it's doing. And then this is just acting as a de-esser again, targeting that same, you know, this is 3,500 Hertz. So there's like an interesting frequency in there at certain moments that just doesn't sound uh, as ideal as we want. And so we just cut it out. So here's the vocal dry. The cause of my euphoria. So yeah, all we're doing is like taming the vocal a bit, making it a little louder, a little brighter. Uh, and that's about it. And then of course we have our reverb and, and all that good stuff. The cause of my euphoria. All right. So what other ad libs do we have? I'll just I'll just play the ad libs because you can hear them in the mix, but no, you haven't got to hear them, uh, you know, by themselves before. Uh, take my hands now, cause of my 
suffering. Yeah, 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 Final, final, final ad lib. The. Euphoria. I mean, come on. Um, and this was actually I, Jungkook came up with these ending ad libs, or this one, I believe. Let me hear these. Mm. Yeah, all Jungkook came up with all of these. All of these. Um, uh, he he added, and I love them. I mean, they sounded so great. So uh, yeah, that's kind of. That's kind of what we got. That's the song. Um, a lot of different elements, a lot of different moments, and it was really all for you guys. You guys asked for it, and, you know, this is, it just came out so great, and I, like, I love listening to this song. Sometimes I'll be at home and, you know, in my feels, I, I put this one on, and this is like the thing that kind of, having a rough day, you listen to that. You can't be having a bad day anymore. Uh, so anyways, that is in the mix for this week. I'm DJ Swivel. I hope you guys enjoy it. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell, do what you got to do, and I'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>